Okay, so in this video, I would like to demonstrate a new feature that I've just recently added to Tycho, which is the ability to work with instrument magnitude uh, as opposed to invoking the differential photometry uh, aspect of it. So uh, I'm going to explain in just a moment why we would do this. So uh, in this case, we have an object of interest uh, where we have instructed the mount to track that object. Uh, as opposed to side rail tracking, which is where you have uh, the apparent motion of the stars is eliminated. Uh, in this case, uh, this is an object of interest. It's a Falcon 9 rocket booster. And again, we'd still like to be able to construct meaningful measurements of this object. We'd like to determine, uh, you know, is there a way to construct a light curve to determine its rotation period? And so I'm going to be showing how to do that uh, in this video. So. To get started, uh, here are these images. There's 100 of them, uh, each one second in exposure time. And these were provided to me by another astronomer. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to Action View Images. Uh, this will pull up the uh, image viewer window. So it'll take just a second here to load up these images. And the object of interest is actually right over here. And in fact, on this very first exposure, uh, it actually passes in front of a star. So uh, I'll just go to the second exposure here and double click on it to center it within the crosshairs. So you can see it here as I uh, animate the frames, uh, you, can see, you can see that it remains uh, centered quite well within these crosshairs. So the mount is doing uh, an exceptional job at tracking this object. But again, this is not side rail tracking, so you can see that the stars uh, actually have a, an apparent motion to them. Now, I will say, uh, for this particular example, you actually probably could have done uh, side rail tracking. And the way I can demonstrate that is if I go to this very first frame here and zoom in, I can just select a random, random star up in this region and create a marker and then zoom out a bit and then just kind of visually track that star as we go from the first to the last frame. Uh, you can see that uh, I create marker two. We now have a line segment here. So here's the actual distance traveled uh, by that star. So again, apparent motion. If we were instead to pretend as though the star were the object of interest, then the object would have remained within the field of view uh, this entire time. So that's what I'm trying to say is we, we could still have done uh, side rail tracking if we had wanted to do so uh, for this example. But uh, either way, there may still be scenarios in which you want to do uh, object tracking rather than side rail tracking. So how would that work with Tycho, which again assumes that the images have uh, been taken with side rail tracking. So in this case, uh, we could actually say that, well, maybe we do not need to use differential photometry. So differential photometry is where you're going to specify comp stars and it's going to compute the magnitude of the object very very accurately uh, using uh, those comparison stars as a sort of a baseline. So there's more detail on that if you want to read about it, but uh, essentially that would, re that would require that you've defined those comp stars and uh, for Tycho it, it again makes those assum that assumption that those comp stars do not move uh, from one frame to the next because it assumes that you've done side rail tracking. So that assumption no longer holds true with this particular data set. So if you try to do differential photometry with the comp stars, uh, you're not going to get a desirable result. So what can you do instead? Well, uh, you can say again, uh, perhaps this object, we do not require super high accuracy uh, of its magnitude, of its brightness. Uh, and and that's because its uh, uh, variation in brightness is quite quite large. It has a very high amplitude. Uh, so if, if we if we are allowed to re relax our uh, requirement there, we can just use instrument magnitude. So here's how you can do that. So this is the new feature, if you will, that I've added. So in the photometry menu here, uh, by default, uh, this option would be checked. So uh, this is the default setting is differential photometry enabled. 
But for this example, we want to uncheck that. So I click it again, and now it is no longer checked. So what we're saying is that we don't want to use differential photometry for this object because we can't ensure that the comp stars uh, remain stationary. So instead, we're going to use instrument magnitude. And here's how that works. So again, I can go to that first uh, exposure, or even the second, that's fine. And uh, let me go ahead and just make sure, yeah, this is the object of interest. So I can create marker one, and then just go to another exposure here, marker two. So this is kind of a formality at this point because the object has very little motion. Uh, you can see it, again, very, very little movement from one frame to the next. Uh, the markers simply inform Tycho that this is the object of interest. So we've already done that now. We've, we have specified marker one and two. And having done so, uh, now I can go to, uh, I, I can right click and say, uh, create photometry from markers. And again, it's going to do so with instrument magnitude rather than differential photometry uh, because I have unchecked that option, uh, unchecked uh, that, that option over here. So, okay, so that was pretty quick. It, it already populated a photometry set. And uh, this is basically uh, for all 100 images, it's already measured the object. So I can now go to graph, plot all sets. So again, just to rehearse what, what happens here, or just to revisit what I just did, um, I, I simply chose create photometry from markers, and it populated this new window, photometry sets, with all those measurements. So uh, I don't need two entries here. So here's that very first one I just created. So plot, in this case, all sets. We've only got one, and here it is. So again, that very first image, uh, the, the object passed in front of a star. So that's why it looks like an outlier because uh, that, that uh, apparent brightness has been increased with the contamination from that first, uh, from that star that it passed in front of. But that's okay. We can simply right click and choose delete. So uh, here we have our light curve. So it's, it's actually pretty cool to see that. This is a uh, representation of what you see um, in the image viewer. Now, suppose we want to determine the rotation period uh, of this object. Well, we can go to period, find period, and if you are not sure what uh, lower and upper bounds you might want to specify, then you can always uh, drag a rectangle uh, from one peak to the next. And in this case, it says uh, perhaps uh, 0.013 hours might be the uh, a good starting point. Uh, again, time unit, in this case, most of the time, most people work with minor planets with this software, uh, but uh, you might want to adjust the time unit so that it makes sense for your particular object here. So in this case, uh, time unit, rather than the default of hours, here we might choose seconds. So uh, in this case, it says, maybe the rotation period is around 45 seconds. So uh, you could choose an, a lower and upper bound around that. Uh, in this case, I chose a fairly wide uh, range uh, from 18 seconds to 360 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and click Find Period. And there it is. It's pretty quick to, to do that. And it says that the rotation period is 43.39 seconds with an amplitude in other words, a variation in brightness of about one and a half uh, magnitude. So again, that's enough of a variation uh, that you can see it uh, visually in the image viewer. So if I uh, go ahead and uh, again animate those frames, uh, you can see it uh, get uh, brighter and fainter uh, from this, this sort of animation here as I scroll through the list of images, in this case the list of uh, photometry measurements. So it's pretty cool to see that. Uh, and again, here's this uh, visual representation. Here's uh, the phased plot. So this is again that rotation period. And here's the periodogram to show the different um, possible uh, rotation periods. So again, 43.39 seconds uh, right here. And then we've got one over here of around uh, 86 
uh, 0.4 seconds. So if I wanted to, uh, I could actually type that in, 86.4, uh, and you can see what that looks like. So if you were to say, oh, maybe it has this kind of rotation period, uh, you could do that. So, uh, you could also adjust it uh, using these uh, buttons here. And so from the 86 to 79 seconds, you can see what impact that has. So uh, either way, uh, it's, it's kind of a pretty quick way to see um, what, what the actual rotation is uh, of that object. So uh, now if we want to, we can go back to the raw plot. And again, uh, here, here is our light curve uh, of the object. So again, this is all using instrument magnitude. So we, we did not, for this particular object, we did not need to use uh, differential photometry. We can just simply use its instrument magnitude and doing so uh, allows us to work with a, a tracked object uh, as opposed to uh, side rail tracking. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. So see you next time.